Met Opera families and kids. It's me, Dan Marshall from the Met Opera Education Department. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to be here to kick off the Metropolitan Opera's very first ever virtual Family Holiday Festival. Hi everyone, great to see you. I know so many of you are joining us as former Met Opera Global Summer Campers, and I am excited to have you here. But if it's your first time, let me tell you, we are going to have so much fun in the next couple of days. We are going to be exploring a wonderful opera called Hansel and Gretel. And you'll be able to watch that opera online uh, beginning today at 5 p.m. Eastern in just a few hours until Tuesday, December 20, or I'm sorry, Monday, December 21st at 5 p.m. You can find out all the information you need right here at metopera.org forward slash family. Okay, friends, I just learned something very interesting. I learned that in the month of December, our opera lovers around the globe celebrate 115 different holidays. And this week, whatever you celebrate, we're happy that you're here with us to celebrate the one thing that we love the most, which is opera and opera at the Metropolitan Opera. There's nothing better. So we have families from 42 different countries joining us today. Can you believe that? It's incredible. I'm about to welcome in our special guest today. He's a favorite of the Met Opera Global Summer Camp Squad. You know him as Mr. Timothy Brenler. Before I bring Tim in, I want you to go to the chat and tell me where in the world you are watching from today. Lay it on me, let me know. We're so happy to welcome you. And now let me get into this live stream, Mr. Timothy Brenler. Hey, Tim. Hi, friends. <laughs> Tim, I'm so happy to have you back here. We're here. We're kicking off this global holiday festival with families who love opera and who love music. And oh my gosh, here we are. We've got Kairit from Estonia. Hi, Kairit. How are you? We've got Christina from Chihuahua, Mexico. We've got, oh, Tim, I think this might be some of your families from Fort Worth, Texas. Yes, so happy to have everybody. Oh my gosh. We've got Zoe who lives by me on the Lower East Side. Hi, Zoe. We've got Claudia from Kuwait. Thank you so much for joining us, Claudia. Oh my gosh, so many families. Our friends in Canada, did you get a lot of snow last night? We did, <laughs> oh my goodness. We're so thrilled to have all of you here. Oh my gosh, Essex, there we go. We've got, oh my gosh, look at all of these wonderful, wonderful families joining us. Minnesota, Windsor, England, oh, Mr. Brenler. Timmy B, as you are known, you have some fans here. Oh my gosh. This chat is blowing up with love for the one and only Tim Brendler. Tim, I understand you have a fabulous lesson about the opera that we're going to be watching this week, Hansel and Gretel, all set to go. And it looks like you're already in the holiday spirit. I've got my uh, holiday decorations up back here, a little Wagner, a little stocking. <laughs> can never go wrong with Wagner. <laughs> you know what? I agree. I agree. So happy to have you here. I feel like I should just turn this whole thing over to you and get out of your hair and let you do what you do best, which is teach. Look at this. We love Brendler. Oh my goodness. Yes, Bat Tim. Oh my gosh. Your fans are all over the world. So, <laughs> so happy to have you here. I'm going to take off. I'll pop back in when you least expect it. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Artie friends. It is such a joy to be with you. We have so much to get through today. We're gonna to play lots of fun games and to uh, start it right off, I'm just gonna share my screen uh, for you so that you can see everything that's going on and we are going to dive right in today. Alrighty friends, as Dan said, happy holidays from the Metropolitan Opera. We are so thrilled you are here with our family holiday festival. We are just so overjoyed that you have included us in your family's holiday traditions this year. Over the course of the next few days, we're gonna embark on this really awesome operatic adventure, making and tasting and 
singing and dancing and sharing in abundance of joy and laughter all the way as we ring in this holiday season and the new year ahead of us. So this year for our family holiday festival, we'll be diving into Engelbert Humperdinck's classic fairy tale opera, Hansel and Gretel, an opera that has become a holiday tradition ever since its premiere in Weimar, Germany, way back on the eve of Christmas Eve on December 23rd, 1893. This production has become a holiday staple here at the Met, and we're so thrilled to be able to bring this to the comfort of your homes um, to all of you beloved opera fans out there. So many of you likely know that this is a story, a very classic fairy tale. Um, and as you know the song, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout. I'm telling you why, the evil witch is gonna gobble you up. It's a little uh, different than what we're used to, is it? So now it wouldn't be a true fairy tale without some gloom and doom, would it, especially um, in this particular story. So as we dive into our Hansel and Gretel journey, I want to begin with a little game, a game to see which list you might be falling on this year. You know, the one and only list, the naughty and nice list. So to play our game, what I want you to do is hold up the... Um, 10 fingers. I want you to hold up 10 fingers. And so what you're going to do is we play this game in the statement. If I read the statement on the screen and you, um, if it applies to you, I want to put a finger down. So at the end, the number of fingers that you're still holding up will reveal whether or not you are uh, on the naughty or the nice list. So Keep the statements in the back of your head because we're going to return to these uh, when we talk more about Hansel and Gretel. So, all right, friends, here we go. Put a finger down if you've ever peeked at a present in advance. So for me, I'm already down to nine, if you can believe that. I know, I've been a little naughty. Put a finger down if you've knocked over a glass and created a big old mess. I'm sure your whole family was not very thrilled about that. Put a finger down if you've ever stepped on someone else's foot while you were dancing. I'm sure that was a, not the most fun dance to be a part of. Put a finger down if you've ever disobeyed your parents. Now, a shout out to all of my music theory students. I know none of you would put a finger down, right? <laughs> put a finger down if you've ever deliberately chosen not to do your chores. Now, how are we doing here? We're halfway through. Has anyone been really naughty enough to be down to one hand right now? That's a little, I, I hope not too many of you only have one hand left. Put a finger down if you've ever said you knew your way, but you really didn't. Put a finger down if you've ever forgotten to set an alarm. Now, how many of you have been so tired and so exhausted that you fell asleep without setting an alarm? And probably many of us, um, but in a forest? Mm, hopefully not many of us. Um, and then we're awakened not by an alarm, but a dew fairy. <laughs> Gosh, do I really love this opera. Put a finger down if you've ever eaten something that you knew you weren't supposed to. Put another finger down if you've ever snuck a cookie before dinner. And put a finger down if you've ever pushed an evil witch into an oven and ate her once she was cooked. <laughs> you, uh, hopefully none of you are that naughty. So hopefully everyone has at least one finger left still standing. So how'd you do? Tell us in the chat, let us know how many fingers did you have remaining after that activity? The less fingers you had remaining, the more likely you are to fall more towards the naughty list. Uh, and the more fingers you had remaining, the more likely you're to fall on the nice list. So I want you to be thinking about Hansel and Gretel. Um, I want you to think about a lot of these statements. And as we talk about the plot of this opera, I want you to be thinking, were Hansel and Gretel, were they naughty or were they nice in this opera? Uh, and in her review, one of our friends uh, over at the New York Times, she's a journalist, uh, and her name is Vivian Schweitzer. And when she reviewed this, what she calls deliciously dark production, 
um, she said that hunger, kidnapping, cannibalism, witch burning is perhaps a strange work to have become a Christmas staple. And yet this story has withstood the test of time, continuing to be a favorite of countless people of ages all across the globe. And soon, I think you'll see why. Let's take a look at the trailer. So let's start by briefly discussing the story of Hansel and Gretel, which went from a folk tale to an operatic masterpiece. The original story of Hansel and Gretel was actually published in children's and household fairy tales by the Grimm brothers that you see on the screen. Jacob and Wilhelm in 1812, who first heard this story from their childhood friend of their younger sister, Dorothy Welt. Uh, and these stories that the brothers published were meant to really unify Germany uh, and preserve the oral and written forms of the German culture. Uh, but in the span of just a few years, the brothers published over 200 stories, if you can believe that, which really became quick, um, popular, very, very quickly became very popular. Hansel and Gretel was composed by the German composer Engelbert Humperdinck, whose sister we really have to thank for bringing this opera to life because uh, she was the one that really brought it to his attention. The history of this text of this opera actually goes really far back to April of 1890 when Adelheid Betta, Humperdinck's sister, actually asked him to set the text of the music for four texts that she found based on the Hansel and Gretel folktale. Uh, and her kids really loved singing them and Humperdinck even gave the songs to a woman he was actually engaged to for a Christmas present. So I've told some folks this before, but good luck friends topping that Christmas gift uh, for your loved ones this year. And Humperdinck took the four songs he wrote for his sisters and her childhood uh, and her children and created this what we call a Zingspiel, an opera with spoken dialogue which finally later turned into a fairy tale opera, the full-on opera that we know today. And the guy that you see here on the screen, this is um, someone who had a big influence on Humperdinck's life. Um, and so his Humperdinck's big orchestration and all his different light motives that we hear in Hansel and Gretel are influences from this gentleman, his mentor, Richard Wagner, another really well-known German composer who Humperdinck worked with really closely uh, and learned a really great, big, great deal from. The opera premiered or gave its first performance, remember I said the eve of Christmas Eve on December 23rd, 1893 in Weimar, Germany, conducted by Richard Strauss, the guy that you see there. Another really well-known German composer of late romantic opera. Uh, and to say that this was opera was a big hit is really an understatement. Um, those of you that know Mahler's music, uh, Gustav Mahler actually conducted this. So lots of superstars in the music world uh, were a part of this journey. Uh, originally, this opera was written in German, uh, and this three-act opera is sung in this production in English, with British librettist translator and theater and opera director Sir David Poutney's translation. So before we dive into the plot, I really want you to intro be introduced to who exactly is a part of this cast. So before we dive into all the, the plot and the synopsis, let's see who's who in this production of Humperdinck's classic fairy tale, Hansel. Oh, Tim, I'm going to have to stop you. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. It's joke o'clock, everybody. What? Oh my gosh, it's my favorite time what of day. What is going on? Oh my gosh. It's my favorite time of day. Sometimes I think it's always joke o'clock in my heart. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness, everyone. Okay, we've got a joke here. Let's see. What do we got here? Okay, this is a wintry themed joke for all of you. Are you ready for it? Okay. Play it on us. All right. What does the snowman eat for breakfast? Anybody? 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 Anybody, Tim? I have no idea. Hopefully nothing too hot. Either. Frosty flakes. <laughs> <laughs> you can never go wrong with puns, and y'all know we love a good pun. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm out of here on that one, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> All right, friends, so this first video I have is gonna play for you a little bit of um, who's who, and you'll get a sneak peek into some of our favorite Met Opera stars who are part of this. Let's take a look. 
Hello, my young friends and all of my families at the Metropolitan Opera. I'm Lisette Oropesa. I played the Dew Fairy in the very first time that we did the production of Hansel and Gretel. My favorite scene in Hansel and Gretel is the dream sequence. When Hansel and Gretel fall asleep in the middle of the forest, they have this beautiful, beautiful dream where they see this gorgeous banquet laid out before them and they get to eat all this food. Cakes ice creams, so much that it all fell down my face and ran onto the floor. These incredible costumes with fish heads come and deliver them these big platters of food. I had to eat cake while singing, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, this is the most fun I've ever had. I drank some milkshake until it ran all the way down into my socks. They even did like fabulous coconut cream, everything. It was Christmas in an opera. Awesome. And what more could you want? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so good. Okay, I'm disappearing again. Awesome. All right, Prince, hopefully you can see back to the screen. We had a little bit of glitch there. Um, but like you just saw in that video, we have some really incredible people that are a part of this. Um, Hansel, surprising as it may be, is what we call a trouser role, a young male character that's actually sung by a woman. In this case, the absolutely stunning English-born mezzo-soprano Alice Coote, who made her Met debut in 2006. And here you can see what she looks like in this production. Gretel is played by the incomparable or matchless and simply amazing German-born soprano Christine Schaefer, who made her debut at the Met in 2002. And there you'll see her on the right side of your screen as Gretel. Now, the witch, an evil, ugly, nasty woman, is actually played by a man. Uh, and in this case, it's a hilariously entertaining English-born Philip Langridge, a phenomenal tenor. He made his Met debut back in 1985 in Cosi Fan Tutte. And in order to create this frumpy, gluttonous, and sneaky little witch, uh, a really big cake-like batter was created and actually baked at 200 degrees to produce this jowly, rubbery, and double-chin character there that you see on the screen. Um, and so did you know Philip Langridge, the witch's makeup artist, was actually also Meryl Streep's makeup artist. Isn't that wild? The witch's makeup artist is none other than Louis Zakarian, the makeup artist and designer and department head on Saturday Night Live. He's been doing that for 25 years, and he even aged Meryl Streep in the movie Evening. So just think of all the different individuals it really takes to bring an opera to life. Uh, World-class musicians, makeup artists, costume designers, set designers, builders, prop directors, stagehands, and that's just beginning to scratch the surface of the enormous family it takes to put together a production. Gertrude, or Hansel and Gretel's mother, is played by English-born mezzo-soprano Rosalind Plowright, who had her Met debut in 2003 in another opera called Yenufa, a Czech opera about a tangled set of village relationships. The child's father and Gertrude's husband, Peter, is played by the American bass baritone Alan Held, who made his Met debut in 1989. And the conductor of it all that brings it all together is this Russian-born superstar, Vladimir Yurovsky, who is widely known as a very distinguished conductor all across the globe. So to help me tell this story, I've called upon a number of my friends across the globe who helped me out to retell this story in our Met Opera Global Summer Camp this past summer. And they've created their own imaginative costume creations for all the characters you'll see in this production. So here is the story of Hansel and Gretel. Act one. Hansel and Gretel are home alone, left to do their chores, and both are bored and really hungry. So in order to cheer themselves up, they start to dance. But suddenly their games are interrupted by their mother who is really angry with them and she's trying to, she comes in and finds them playing instead of working. And her anger, the milk jug is knocked over, losing what was supposed to be their only thing for supper. So the mother sends Hansel and Gretel into the forest instead to gather strawberries. However, their father stumbles home and the mother is very irritated but calms down when he finally shows up with his big sack full of food. Uh, and when he asks about Hansel and Gretel, the father is surprised to hear though that they're in the forest. And so horrified, 
he tells his wife that the children are in danger because of all of the evil things that lurk in the forest and especially the witch who lives there. And so they rush off into the woods and they go looking for them. Act two, this is some of my favorite scenes in this opera. Hansel and Gretel happily gather and eat strawberries and when night falls, they realize they're lost and become scared. The Sandman, who you see here, appears and calms them by sprinkling sand on their eyes, which puts them to sleep. They say their evening prayers and they go to sleep, and in a dream, they see 14 angels protecting them. Now, the Sandman makes an appearance in other German folk tales, this mythological character that sprinkles sand in your eyes. And, and this is why, if you ever wondered why you wake up with those eye boogies, those crusties or sleepies in your eyes, um, Tell us in the chat, what do you know those? Do you know those as sleepies, eye boogies, crusties? Is there something else that, that your family uses? Uh, what were you taught? But a cool fun fact here, did you know that there's a real name for eye boogies and they're actually called room? Here's your science lesson for the day. They're produced when mucus actually dries in your eyes. Blech, isn't that gross? Um, and it actually leaves behind that gnarly sludge in your eyes. But it's a little cooler to think that it's from the, the, uh, the Sandman here. Act three. So I digress, here we go, back to the opera. At dawn, the Dew Fairy comes to wake up Hansel and Gretel, and they're so excited that they see the house not too far away. But suddenly the witch appears and captures them by casting a spell on Hansel to fatten him up so he, she can eat him. But with a spark of wit and hope, Gretel breaks the spell from Hansel, and when the witch asks Gretel to look in the oven, Gretel pretends she doesn't know how. And as the witch shows Gretel, the children shove her inside and shut the door, and the oven explodes, and all the gingerbread children the witch had enchanted all come back to life. And their parents appear, and the families reunited, and everyone give thanks for being freed. So to recap our opera, friends, um, another group of friends all the way from Africa, our friends in Kenya have produced this really cool video for us to watch. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Sana. And my name is Michael. We are from Kenya. And this is our trailer for Hansel and Gretel. A huge shout out to our friends Sanag and Moipe and their whole family from Kenya. So friends, what really helps folktales stand the test of time is their relevance for each passing day, year, decade, and even centuries. Their ability to connect us all with this quest to teach us good morals. Uh, and they mirror the challenges that we all face every day in our lives, many of which we've certainly uh, faced in this past year uh, during the pandemic. But they also highlight a really important thing, which is hope and room for improvement and a better tomorrow. And so I've shown you here 
here are some things that I think Hansel and Gretel teaches us. If it's too good to be true, it's, it's probably not good. <laughs> that we should care for others. Um, the care that we see the two siblings, I think is really special and something that we could always, uh, you could always be a little bit nicer to your siblings. Um, we're reminded that parents aren't always perfect, that temptations and evil larks around every corner. Um, stranger danger, as some of your parents might say, be cautious and stay alert of the witches in this world. You can use your intelligence to rescue yourself from danger. What I love about this is these two children um, rescue themselves and each other out of this really scary situation. Justice, the fact that good always champions over evil, that this good is always gonna triumph in the end. Um, struggles are real and we're not alone in them. And then most importantly, I think we should never lose hope. Uh, and those last two, I think are really the most important takeaways. I remember a few months ago when we were first talking about bringing Hansel and Gretel um, into your homes, uh, Dan, Kamala, and I were all talking uh, with our colleagues, and, and someone had mentioned that this story reminds them that when fears enter into our lives, it's a feeling that passes. I think this is something, Dan, you had said. It's a feeling we, we can control and a feeling that we, we ought not to experience alone. And so there's a reason why we tell these stories over and over and over again. So I want you to tell us in the chat, what does your family share? What types of stories do you share around the table? Send us a message in the chat. Do you tell folk tales or really funny stories from um, you know, years past, other family gatherings? Type in the chat, what are some family stories that you tell around the table or around the fire? So as we do that, friends, I want you to go over to Mentimeter. Now, this is Global Summer Camp Crew. You, you all know, Menti is our best friend in the world. And my shout out to my music theory students, we use Menti all the time. Take out your device and go to www.menti.com and enter the code that you see there, 77455538. Go ahead to Menti and you're going to use that code that you see there, 77 four, five, five, three, eight. And in just a second now, I'm gonna switch screens for a second and we're gonna move over to the Menti that you see. Hi, Mr. Tim. I just wanted to come in and say, I was thinking of some stories that my family likes to share oh, when we're all together at the holidays. And um, Tim, I was thinking that we like to talk about things that happened to us in the past, things that happened when, cause I'm old now, when I was young, when we were little, when we were young and, and being silly, um, we like to talk about um, favorite uh, operas or musicals or favorite performances that we've seen. And uh, wasn't that wonderful? Or, or we talk a lot about times when people slipped and fell. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more like our family. <laughs> That's what I do. Um, so I'm going to pop back out, but I think your mentee is all set to go. Awesome. Go. All right, friends, if you just joined us and even the friends that are watching this after the live session, this is still going to be live for you to be able to enjoy and input your input into this mentee. So again, friends, any point if you're joining us, the code is at the top of the screen there, 7745538. three the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna play a little clip for you and I want you to describe what you're hearing. So here we go. We're gonna play that one again. Now, thinking about either descriptive words or maybe some orchestration, what are some of the things that you are hearing? Let's, let's listen to that one again. Thank you. 
a lot of what I see, there's a lot of drama. We see a lot of, uh, in the word cloud here, I see a lot of words about things that are dramatic. Um, and there was another one, this keeps moving, so it's hard for my eyes to keep seeing. <laughs> but uh, I really like a lot of these really exciting, adventurous, absolutely, tension. That was one of my favorite words I saw there. Tension, what a really great word to describe that particular, um, that excerpt. Now, reflecting on that, a light motive is, is think of like um, movie music. Um, a light motive is a theme that constantly we, we hear it over and over again. And usually they're associated with a specific person, place, or thing. And so Wagner, who was Humperdinck's, um, Wagner was Humperdinck's mentor and Wagner did this a ton. And we, this is actually something that he, he uh, picked up himself. So I want you to think of what light motive was that? Do you think that was the Dew Fairies theme, the Sandman, maybe a prayer or a hopeful theme, the parents theme, the witches theme, the dancing theme where the two children dance? Let me play it again and tell me which light motive do you think that this is? And absolutely, you all nailed it right spot on. That is absolutely what we're gonna hear, especially that gnarly intro at the beginning. That's, we're gonna hear that. That's the witch's theme. Now here's another one for you. Uh, this one's gonna be like night and day, totally different. Again, just describe to me what you're hearing in this clip. I really love the words that I'm seeing here. Beautiful, calm, peaceful, tranquil, hopeful, all really um, words that are night and day to what we just heard. Um, so again, I want you to think about what might this particular theme, these are, these are two particular excerpts, you're gonna hear them a lot. Um, so go ahead and tell me on this next slide here, which light motive do you think that that was? Again, the Dew Fairy, the Sandman, the Prayer or Hope theme, parents, the witches, or the dancing theme. Tell me which one that is. And you all, you that was spot on. That you're going to hear that in moments when there's a serene, this beautiful sense of calm. Um, and this is going to be the the thing that you hear when um, we're we're really feeling hopeful about the situation that Hansel and Gretel are in. So here we go with our mentee. Uh, I'm going to show you three different um, scenes, and I want you to be thinking of um, what did these all have in common. So take a look, this is the first act that we're gonna see. 
we're gonna little think of like a little I spy game. What are you seeing in this picture? Uh, and I'm gonna ask you, what do these three pictures or three or four pictures I'm gonna show you have in common? So here's act one. It's a little dreary. You can see some of the wallpapers sort of crumbling in their house. Um, it looks a little old, a little darker. Um, here's a scene from act two. Um, now in act two, see if there's anything, especially on the left hand side, maybe, that um, is similar to something in act one. I want you to be thinking, what do all of these things have in common? Maybe a theme or an item? Here's act three, uh, still act two, um, but a different scene, different picture. Now this is a grand banquet and now they look like bobblehead chefs, but these are actually our 14 angels that um, visit Hansel and Gretel in their sleep. And then here's the last picture, act three. This is the witch's kitchen. Uh, and think of, look at all those things in there. Uh, it's really industrial looking. You can see that big oven on the right hand side. Um, and so my question for you is, what do these various sets of each act have in common? Um, thinking about what really, you can just write, uh, write a, either a, a little short little sentence or maybe uh, just a couple of words or maybe one word. Is there one item that you saw in a lot, whether it was um, maybe a piece of the kitchen? Um, tell me some of those things that you saw. What did you see that were similar? Maybe a thing, oh, no decorations. Ah, that's really, really interesting. Uh, a little rustic, absolutely. That's a really great comment. Um, drab and beauty, absolutely. I love this. A sink, uh, European in style. I love that. They're all about food. That's a really big thing that there's a big theme of food and hunger in this opera. Um, industrial, that Hansel and Gretel are not alone, that they have each other. I love that so much that we'll always see them together. They never, they never leave each other alone. Um, I love these kitchen parts, really tall to make the singers look shorter. That's a brilliant observation. They look elaborate, um, antique looking props. Oh, I love these friends. You have just done such a great job. Absolutely. Darker, absolutely. These are great. Good, good, good. Next one. Now we're gonna play sort of, you know, we're gonna put you in the shoes of some of these other characters uh, in sort of a what would you do scenario. If you were Hansel and Gretel's mom or dad, what would you have done? Would you have sent them off to, into the woods alone? Would you have gone with them into the forest? Or would you have um, just made them stay home and complete all their chores while, uh, while you went to go get some food? Tell me, if you were Hansel and Gretel's mom or dad, what would you have done? I'm really curious about that. As much as I think I would um, have gone with them Honestly, I'd, I'd be on the naughty list. I'd probably go send them off to the forest alone. <laughs> but what would you do? Oh, it's, it's interesting to me how, how uh, sort of across the board we are. The majority of you would have done, I think you do the responsible thing. Good for you. You're on the nice list this year. <laughs> Here's the next one I have for you. If you were Hansel and Gretel, what would you have done? Would you have turned back right away when you realized you were lost? Would you have kept going and slowly and cautiously, but, but really just kept a brave face to keep your sibling calm? Uh, would you have pretended like nothing was wrong and just sort of kept going deeper into the forest sort of with carefree? And, or would you have just had a major meltdown right on the spot? Now, again, I would love to have think that I would probably be this really brave character like Hansel and Gretel, but if we're being really honest, I'd probably be in that last category, throwing a fit or just, just a big old meltdown right on the spot. <laughs> My husband would tell you that's probably very accurate, that I would probably choose that last one. So what would you have done if you were Hansel and Gretel? This is really cool. I, I love seeing all your responses on this mentee. Here's another one for you. Do you think Hansel and Gretel are on the naughty or nice list? Now, Remember, at the very end of the opera, they pushed the witch into the oven. And then, if you saw in that last season, if you're into the very, very beginning, this last scene, there's a uh, gingerbread cookie that's a little burnt and looks shockingly similar to the witch. Um, do you think they were naughty or nice? Now, although 
they may have been a little naughty towards the end. What I really love about Hansel and Gretel, like we talked about these themes is that they never left each other's sides and, and they really show us, I think really how to be brave in a really, really scary situation. Uh, and that we don't need to traverse those uh, scary situations and times in our lives alone. Um, it's interesting, like that you see here, we're almost on a 50-50 split, um, very close to that, whether we think they're naughty or nice. And now if you stumbled upon a big chocolate cake, I want you to tell me, would you have grabbed a slice without hesitation? Would you have looked around to see if anyone else was watching and then grab a slice? Would you ask your sibling or friend to grab a slice? Or what would you do? Tell me which one. Or some of you would just say you'd pass on. Now, I don't know if I would like you, I don't know if I'd have the self-control to really pass on a slice of cake, especially if we were looking at that big chocolate cake that we see there in the background. Um, what would you do if you stumbled upon, you can see that, that's that's from their torso up, that's an enormous cake. Uh, and that's, we're gonna actually see that very, uh, that very scene uh, in there. There's only one person so far that would ask their siblings or friend to get a slice for them. That'd probably be what I would do. I wouldn't wanna get in trouble. I'd probably make them go get it for me. I'm a bit of an instigator, <laughs> which I, I bet there's a couple more of you as well that might do that same thing. <laughs> All right, here's another one as we near the end of this minty. Looking at the delicious sweets and treats on the witch's table, which would your hand go to first? Now, all of these sweets are actually, um, they, none of them are just props. Uh, they are props, but they're not fake props. These are actually from a bakery in uh, the tri-state area. Uh, and so every night when this was done, they would get a delivery from the bakery and all of these delicious things. And I love Alice talks about just what raucous fun this must have been uh, to be on stage and just to be in a production where you just get to go hog wild and eat all these delicious uh, sweet things. What would your sweet tooth take you? Would they take you to Jello, some cake, pudding, donuts, cookies? Uh, which one would you go for? A lot of us would go for donuts and I think I would too. Instead of a cake, we had donuts at our wedding. Um, and so I think if, if I saw that huge spread, I'd probably also go for donuts. And last, what is your favorite holiday tradition or memory? I want you to think about what is your favorite holiday tradition or memory? And Dan's going to help us with a video just once we wrap up this mentee, he's going to show us some of our Met Opera stars, what they consider to be their favorite parts of um, favorite memories or favorite holiday traditions. So just in this final mentee we have, and then we're gonna watch a video and then I'm gonna tell you all the awesome things we have in store for this week. And then stay tuned to the very end when we wrap up with a really awesome Hansel and Gretel fill in the blank from one of our cool activities that are in your packets. So Christmas, 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 eating food, baking cookies. Oh, I'm a baker myself. I love baking. Um, my potato latkes, oh, I love that. Um, oh, the Christmas pickle. How many other people have the Christmas pickle? Met Opera Summer Camp Reunion. Oh, I love that. Uh, spending time with family. Absolutely. Unwrapping presents. Christmas carols. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I love all of these friends. What a cool time. Oh, I love all these memories that are coming back. Oh, sleigh riding. Oh, uh oh. That these are so cool, Tim. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Dan. Wow. You want to do you want to take it away for us and show us that clip? Absolutely. This is such a fun holiday memory video from the stars of Hansel and Gretel. Here we go. My favorite holiday memory growing up was decorating the Christmas tree. My family has a large collection of ornaments that we have kind of amassed over time. And some of them aren't even functioning anymore. They're like supposed to sing or make noise or make music and they, a lot of them are broken. I remember being about nine and I was on my own looking at the tree. And I just thought to myself, in this moment, I am so happy just to be here right now in this simple way. I think my favorite holiday song is Chestnuts Roasting on a, I can't even think of the title, I love that song. Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, isn't it? Yes. I really look forward on the holiday season, just everything stopping, even if it's only for a day, but it's just that time where you can sit down and just be together and nothing else matters. It's just you and your family or your friends. You can just 
share how much you love each other, even if you don't say it to each other, you know it, because that's why you're together. Oh, that is so, so I love uh, Lizette and Alice and Sasha for helping us out and sharing their memories with us. I want to know what everyone's memory was. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Dan, I'm going to need your help for this next activity. All right. A really, really cool thing planned for you. And one of our favorite activities in this year's family activity packet that you can find on the Mets website is a print. Uh, you can print them off and complete that, whether it's culling or there's a maze. Uh, lots of cool little activities you can print off and complete. Right. One of them is a Hansel and Gretel fill in the blank, which we're actually going to give a try now. And okay. so we're going to ask for very specific words. Uh, and once we have all of our words, I'll read the whole story for you for our own version of Hansel and Gretel. And now, Dan, since I can't always see the whole screen, as we go through this, if, uh, if there's a particular word, you could just shout out. I'll write it down. But the first one, friends, is in the chat, type your dream destination. And Dan, tell me which one you want to highlight. Oh, yeah. Dream hmm. destination. Let's give everyone a few seconds to get their imagination going. But my dream, <laughs> my dream destination? Ooh, gosh, you know, I always love how uh, Fifth Avenue in New York City looks during um, during the holiday season between Thanksgiving and New Year's when everything's out and all the stores have this amazing um, the window displays. I wonder what people's favorite destination is. What about you? I think yeah. my dream destination is probably New Zealand. Oh yeah. It's so beautiful there. Oh wow. Someone says Japan. Oh. Um, Ella said the Swiss Alps. Ooh, these are fun. Wow. I was like, I'm gonna go walk up this street. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Oh, of course, Victoria, the North Pole. How silly of us. That's a <laughs> I was always said the same thing. That's so fun. Um, Dancing Cat Ben says, Tokyo, amazing. Oh, I love that. Tokyo in the spring, Claudia? I don't even know what that, like, because of the cherry blossoms? I don't even know. I don't know Tokyo. I've never been there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My favorite destination is Hawaii. Oh. That's right. I wonder if anyone's here from Hawaii today. A lot of people saying Iceland. Iceland. A lot of people saying, oh, the Bahamas. Tibet. Ooh. Iceland. Wow. Iceland, Swiss Alps, Bahamas, the North Pole. There's so many to choose from. So All right. many. Oh, wait, here, I've got a good one. Okay, Diego go. says, New York, to visit the Met, of course. Oh, absolutely. New York it is. New York. All right. Diego, you win. A favorite game that you all like to play. What is your favorite game that you like to play? Either a board oh. game or a video game. What are some of your favorite games? Oh, gosh. My favorite holiday game. I'm going to, I'm just buying some time while people fill in the blanks in the chat. Um, a favorite game that my family plays is this old card game we call Baccarat. And it's like, um, I don't know, we, we play for like a penny, we bet a penny. And, <laughs> and I always lose. But the funny thing about it is I always end up having to like borrow money from my mom to keep playing. I wonder what your favorite game is. Do you play a game with your family? We really love Phase 10. Uh, that's a card game. We really love to play that. Yeah. With our friends, we like to play Settlers of Catan. That's a fun game. Oh, that's a long game. Though yeah. someone says Monopoly, that's a good one. Oh, oh my gosh. Kaylin is with you with the Settlers of Catan. Oh, yes. Uh, Ella likes Blackjack, big money. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. Someone likes Pokemon Sword. Hadiza? Okay. okay. Oh, I love Moncala. That's so fun. That's like a pickup game. That's so fun. The original Mastermind. I know you're not talking about Tim. I know that's actually a game, right? <laughs> All right, wait. What else do we have here? Hopscotch. Amara, of course. So fun, Hopscotch. Um, Star Wars Monopoly. That is next level, Dancing Cat. <laughs> I think that's the answer, right? Star Wars Monopoly has to be our answer. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's do another one. Um, we need an adjective describing a feeling, like mm. joyful, anxious, oh. any type of adjective that can describe oh, a yeah. feeling that you feel today. I know a, a lot ahead. of us are feeling... Um, a lot of we're feeling joyful because we're we're back in touch with some of our Met Opera Global summer campers. That's what I'm feeling. I I missed all of you so much. Um, 
oh my gosh, let's see what else. I'm I'm like I was feeling uh, especially elated this morning because my puppy got to play in the snow for the first time and he was having the time of his life. Um, that's a feeling that I had. Oh, Sophia's feeling uh, festive. Um, Sophia and Elise, sorry, Elise. Um, someone's feeling, well, I love this one. Kaylin's feeling discombobulated. That's oh, what fun. a great word. Um, let's see, Mary, of course, Hannah. Of course we're feeling, feeling merry. It's the merriest time of year. Um, what else? Sleepy Kyret, of course, because it's late for you in Estonia. Oh my gosh, it's past your bedtime probably. I know, I'm just kidding. I know you don't sleep. Okay, um, <laughs> wait, joyful, Let's crazy. Let's, the last one we'll do, we'll just give you a teaser and then you'll, you'll be able to do this with your family at home. Uh, what is your favorite food? Your favorite food, the sky's the limit. It doesn't have to be a dessert. It doesn't have to be a, a, a tasty uh, sweet. It could be something Ooh. sour. What is your favorite thing? Like, oh, I love sour gummy worms. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, wow. What's your favorite food, that, Tim? Uh, I think uh, if it was candy, probably sour gummy worms. Um, if it were like something for um, maybe dinner, or honestly, like Cheerios. I could eat Cheerios the rest of my life and I'd be happy. Or pretzels. I'm such. Oh, really? You're, yeah. yeah. I um. Well, you know, I live in this great city that's full of amazing food. But I have to say, there's um, there's a, a restaurant around the corner on Avenue A that makes um the best pita bread I have ever had. So yeah, yes. I know. It's so, it's so great. Fun. yeah. Oh gosh, here we go. Here's some. Oh my gosh, arancini. Korean barbecue, Ooh. oh, bubble tea, Mary, I know you love bubble tea, that is the best too, that is fun. It's like an experience, it tastes good. Um, <laughs> let's see, uh, alfajorek? I don't even know what that is, Amara, that sounds delicious. Um, okay, here we go, Tal. Candy, super sour Skittles food, couscous with soup, that sounds so comforting. I want both of those things right now. Um, oh my gosh, let's see what else. A sugar cookie, of course, right? Oh, I love it. Pita bread is controversial to some. Oh my gosh, Carl, I had no idea. Candy canes, spinach, please don't judge. Marius, we will spinach. never judge you for anything, oh least of gosh. all spinach. All right, y'all, let's take take a listen to this. You ready? We're gonna put it all together. This is okay. Funny. All right, friends, you can do this whole fill in the blanks, this Hansel and Gretel. It's going to create your own version of the story. And let me read yours that we created here. Hansel and Gretel are two children living in New York. In one afternoon, they are hungry and play Star Wars Monopoly to pass the time. Their mother is discombobulated when she returns home and she sends the children to collect spinach, Korean barbecue, super sour Skittles and couscous in the Bahamas. <laughs> Isn't that, that is perfect. <laughs> that is the um, that's either the sequel or this is fan fiction. But I would want to see that opera as well. Oh my gosh! Yes. Oh, I love that so much, friends. Oh. I know we are nearing sort of the end of our hour here, and so um, what I'm going to do is I have here on the uh, on my screen is um, just a little overview of our family holiday festival that we really want to just remind you of all the incredible things that are happening. So Dan, let me know, are we, are we ready to go? We're for ready it? to go, I see it right now. Awesome. Holiday Festival, with the, fish, with the fish butler. Oh my gosh, also my favorite, also one of my favorite characters in costumes. You, you cannot go wrong there with the fish butler. And also check, uh, when you go into the woods in this production, check out also for the trees that come to life. It's a really cool scene. So uh, like Dan was saying earlier on, we have this really awesome um, holiday festival for you and your family to be a part of through the 21st and here's what we have in store. So the first thing up tomorrow is whether or not you're feeling crafty. I love doing crafts and this first thing that we have up tomorrow is on Friday December 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time join professional clown Stephanie Sign who is going to help us get our hands dirty as we build a really cool and special craft inspired by Hansel and Gretel's adventure into the wild woods. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you're like me, you probably love to bake and we have a really, really special thing. Note on Saturday, it's a little bit earlier. So it's gonna start at 11 a.m. Eastern time. On Saturday, we are going to be joined by uh, the New York Times food writer, 
Melissa Clark, and our all-time favorite, one of our dear friends, Met Opera star, ARC, who's going to join forces with Melissa to cook this delicious recipe from her new, from Miss Clark's new cookbook, Kid in the Kitchen. So grab your apron, friends. Join us in the kitchen as we celebrate the season together with a really tasty treat you won't want to miss. I can't wait for these workshops. This is going oh, to be so much too. fun. <laughs> oh, Ben loves to bake too. Oh, yes. You're going to have so You're much fun with forever. Anthony. <laughs> Creative carols, if you're feeling creative, those of you in, uh, from summer camp really remember this fella, one of our dear friends that you are going to meet again is Joel, who is gonna come back uh, and who is, Joel's been on uh, Broadway as well as we've had such a fun time with him this past summer. He's gonna teach us how to write songs uh, and music inspired by our own holiday traditions. So excited for that one. Which, that'll be just such a ride. If y'all remember, oh my gosh, Joel is, He's going to be a rip-roaring time, man. He's, he's a really creative guy. The Solstice Songs. Now, the solstice is either the longest or shortest day in the entire year, and we are going to lift our voices in song with the one and only Goosey, who is going to um, help us celebrate and ring in the solstice with a musical adventure exploring songs and stories that have helped us all understand the passing of time. And... We could not do this without a final Zoom dance party, which if you're thinking um, a virtual dance party, what? Our global summer camp party was off the roof, baby. Get your dancing shoes on and don't forget that you want to register for that event because it's gonna be on Zoom. So be sure to do that. The creative challenge um, that it teachers, uh, if you may have seen this uh, a couple of days ago, um, don't forget the creative challenge from our dear friend, Miss B, which is to set a place at the table for someone you love. Um, what a really fun and needed thing. And with all of these things, the most important thing for all of these different events that you see here is we don't want you to forget to share with us all your awesome creations on awesome photos and show us how you are um, bringing the Met into your holiday tradition. So tag us at Met Opera Student and the hashtag Met Holiday Fest. And again, friends, we are so thrilled you have joined us for this special holiday um, family festival. It's going to be such a fun few days. Oh my gosh, Tim, I love this so much. And I love that we got to kick off this amazing first time ever Met family holiday festival with you. Oh my gosh. I know, Kyra, you will not miss anything. Of course not. And we will not miss anything. I cannot wait, friends. We have an amazing week coming up. I wanted to, Tim, before we um, all take off here, I wanted to tease uh, tomorrow's workshop uh, with Stephanie by showing everybody a little sneak peek video of what you're about to get yourselves into. Do you think they're ready for it? I hope so. Ready or not, baby. <laughs> Here we go. Fasten your safety belts. <laughs> I have no idea what I was expecting, but that was just the most amazing thing I've seen all year. <laughs> I was so excited for today. And let me tell you, I am just as excited for tomorrow. Friends, a little housekeeping. For those of you who joined late or um, who are worried that you missed something or Tim said something so insightful about Hansel and Gretel and you're like, what was that he said? Remember, you can go back and watch this video at any time. It will remain on the uh, Met Opera Global Summer Camp page forever. We can't wait. Um, so I'm, we're gonna put up the schedule again. Thank you. Actually, um, the schedule, everybody, um, is you can find everything here, everything you need at Met Opera Family Holiday Festival. Very easy uh, URL, metopera.org forward slash family. And remember everyone, at, uh, in a few short hours, three hours from now, 
5 p.m. Eastern time, that's New York City time, you can begin watching Hansel and Gretel for free from uh, that website right there, from that link. Uh, you're going to have so much fun. If you haven't seen it before, it's a perfect opera. If you've never seen an opera before, it's the perfect first opera. Am I right, Tim? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Well, this was a joy, sir. Thank you so much. I'm so, oh, Diego, thank you. What I know, it is a reunion, right? This is so fun. Everyone, thank you for being here. I cannot wait to see, oh, my gosh, I know, Claudia. We are so pumped for this week. All right, everyone. I think it's time for us to uh, sign out. Sign off. <laughs> sign off. <laughs> and um, I'm going to thank you. Thank you all for being here. And um, we'll see you tomorrow at uh, same time, same channel. Bye. <laughs>